Chapter 16. Travis headed out Saturday afternoon. He had Hot Fox in his backpack and bologna in his pocket, out of the house before Grandpa got home from work. The day before, walking home on a cloud of word happiness, he'd actually hoped Grandpa would ask if he learned anything at school that day. He wanted to say yes and mean it. But Grandpa walked in the door, tossed Travis a donut, and spent the evening sucking down old duels and watching TV. Didn't ask anything. He didn't go to his AA meeting, hadn't gone all week in fact, or said one word to Travis since poking him Thursday night. Looked like he was back to not liking chatterboxes. The day was gray and sullen, the sun hidden. Moisture hung thick on the air and Travis found it hard to get a full deep breath. When he got close to the dog's house, he high, low whistled. The dog came roaring down the driveway. Hang on, hang on. Travis pulled the plastic bag out of his pocket. The dog quit barking as soon as Travis opened the bag. He could smell that bologna and didn't want to scare it away. Travis tossed him a piece and he caught it in the float. Chomp, sloop, and it was gone. Travis tossed him the other one. Slurp, gone. His long pink tongue swooshed across his teeth, splashing slobber. Travis turned the empty bag inside out and held it at arm's length. The dog dainty stepped closer and carefully nosed it, licked it, and waved the tip of his tail. He was a nice looking dog when he wasn't all hair up, lips snarled, black with a white chest like a clean shirt front, pointed stand up ears and a sharp nose and a long narrow tail with a white tip to the end. When you're not doing that snarly thing, you look pretty good, said Travis, but you've still got some drool dripping there. The dog cocked his head and geared his tail up to a full wig. You wouldn't want to go for a walk with me, would you? Travis turned to walk away, padded, patting his thigh as he went. Come on, boy, come on. He trotted a little, clapping his hands. Come on. The dog watched Travis like he was a cartoon on TV. Travis squatted, whistled, and held out his hands. Just for a little bit, just up to the next corner. Come here, boy. Travis patted the ground in front of him. The dog looked at the spot with all attention, as if he wanted to understand what the problem was. No go, huh? You've got your home and your people. You don't need a walk with me. A huge rock hulked at the bottom of the driveway on the other side of the ditch. Taller than Travis, wider than his spread arms. What if I just sat there behind your rock for a while and looked over my words? Would you mind? The dog stood in place, allowing Travis to approach. He found a flat spot where he could use the rock for a backrest and he completely and be completely hidden from the road. The dog didn't growl or bark, but he watched Travis's every move. Want to come over here? Asked Travis. Sit by me. I'll read words to you. It came out so easy talking to the dog. Roscoe never minded chatterboxing. He'd gaze up at Travis and take his skinny tail back and forth, waiting for more. Travis took out his lists and said the words out loud. He'd mixed up the order and practiced again, up and down the lists. The dog edged closer and lay down, nose on his paws about 10 feet away, listening. Not gonna rip my face off if I get one wrong, are you? Oh wait, you started to wag again. I saw it. Travis started from the top again. Suddenly, the dog jumped to his feet, ears pricked and tail wagging. Larry, the voice was creaky, like it didn't get used much. Larry, where are you? The dog dashed up the drive. Travis sat perfectly still. If the person came down the drive and looked right, he'd be caught. He was partially hidden by high grass, but not completely. He closed the book and scooted back, trying to ease out of sight. But before he could get all the way around the rock, Larry appeared. Travis froze. An old woman with a cane walked behind Larry. She moved slowly, her eyes on the ground. Where were you? She asked, chasing a squirrel, barking at the male. She moved beyond Travis's view on the other side of the rock. The mailbox opened and closed. Nothing but bills. Come on, let's get in before it starts raining. She came back into view and looked up, searching the sky from one horizon to the other. Travis held his breath. She'd see him any minute. And what would he say? I wanted to sit by your rock. I like your dog. She pulled herself up the sl sloop on her cane. Larry at her side. A raindrop fell on Travis's hand and another on his cheek. A few more splattered on the book. 
As soon as the woman and Larry were out of sight, he put the book back in his backpack and crawled to the other side of the rock. No cars were coming from either direction, so he walked out to the road. The rain came down in fat, warm drops. He went the long way around into town and stopped at the library, hoping Velveeta might still be there. By the time he got to the door, the rain had turned cold. Did you come to get a library card? Connie asked when he stuck his dripping head in the door. No, just looking for Velveeta. She left already. Do you want to come in and dry off? Maybe find a nice book or two? No, thanks. He backed out and put his jacket over his backpack so Haunt Fox wouldn't get wet. Cold trickles ran down the back of his neck. As he passed the convenience store, Bradley came out of the door carrying a gallon of milk. Hey, Travis, why are you walking around in the rain? You got sent out for milk because I got sent out for milk because my parents don't care if I catch pneumonia. No reason. They walked through town together. I thought that went pretty well at lunch Friday, said Bradley. That was funny, the Velveeta fan club. You're still not going out with her, right? Still just friends? Why do you care so much? Because I was thinking about asking her to the dance, but I wouldn't want to. But I wouldn't if you were going to. If you were going to. I mean, you got there first. Travis didn't know anything about any dance. I've been thinking about it since the posters went up last week and it can't hurt to ask, right? I know she'll say no, but so what? I figure even asking will be interesting because who knows what she'll say. I'm getting better at sword fighting with her, don't you think? They got to Water Street and Bradley stopped. So you don't mind, right, if I ask her? Travis stood there with his hands jammed in his pocket, shivering. Bradley had on a nice rain jacket with the hood pulled up and hiking boots. Travis's socks were soggy. I didn't think you would, but I just wanted to make sure because you and I are getting to be friends, too, right? Just then, Travis didn't feel very friendly. He wished Bradley would go away and stay there. Okay, then. See you later, Trav. Bradley turned down water. Travis's feet squished in his shoes as he walked up the hill toward home. Velveeta on a soggy, sucky Sunday. Yesterday when I got home from work, the butt's truck was in the drive. I would have gone straight to your trailer, only it was pouring rain and I was soaked all the way to my underwear. And, stupid me, I haven't been keeping clothes at your trailer, trailer, but from now on I'm going to for sure. So I opened the door and there he was, Drunko Skunko, sitting on the floor with his head in the lap of the Madre, bawling. The Madre looked up at me like I was, I don't know, a stranger? Like I was interrupting? Mean face, like she hated me. So, wet or not, I came over here and double bolted and stayed here overnight, wrapped up in a towel and a blanket. Nobody even bothered to see if I'm okay. I could have been out in the rain catching my death if I, of icy rain cold. The Madre is so many different people. Am I going to get the face slapping mean madre or the fun card playing madre or the crying in her beer madre i never know sometimes it makes my head want to spin off and why doesn't she just kick jimmy's lazy no good butt away from here for good i wonder what travis is doing today i wonder what it's like at his house i wonder if he learned any new words maybe he has really nice parents and i could move in there they could hide me in the basement and feed me on leftover bread crust only they don't have a basement.